I'm having so much fun. Young Sheldon is literally the best. And we're not only talking about the show, but about its cast, too. Amazing. Absolutely. Do you know who was good at scaring the others? <laughs> what nickname does Annie Potts have for the kids? And what does Ian Armitage think is the weirdest thing about the 80s? I mean, what was up with that? <laughs> The relationship dynamic between Sheldon and Missy is great to watch on screen, but did you know that they're just as cool in real life? Reagan Reward shared that she and Ian truly are like twins. They have a lot in common, and their bond is pretty special. Like, we'll be in the middle of a scene, and all of a sudden we just both glance at each other like at the exact same moment, and just burst out laughing for no reason whatsoever. Reagan and Ian have a lot of fun on the set. Their favorite thing to do? Play pranks. There's a costume lady named Miss Gina, and we love scaring her. They like to hide in corners and jump out at her. We go this, and she screams like it's the end of the world, like it's a zombie apocalypse. Once they found something they called a demon doll in a closet. <laughs> we put it in the writer's room, and they came in, and it was really funny because they screamed so loud. It was really funny. Not sure it was as fun for the writers, but working on young Sheldon wasn't all about fun, at least for Reagan. Early on, she shared that she hated her bed on the show. It's not very comfortable. No, it's itchy. Yeah, I'm like, itch, itch, <laughs> itch. Surprisingly, Ian didn't have that problem. So you got the soft bed. I got the soft bed. Luckily for Reagan, the crew eventually managed to make her life a bit easier. They gave her soft clothes to wear underneath her pajamas like little shirts and stuff to put under it so it's not itchy and they'll give me like um pants. Good to know. Reagan's other challenge was learning about the 80s. What are you focusing on here? I'm not an 80s kid at all. More than anything, she was surprised by something that was very common back in the day. I was confused by the very concept of a wall phone. I thought the phone was a storage cabinet when I first saw it, the wall phone. And when she had to deal with a Walkman, Let's just say that scene took a while. Keep watching to find out who else was totally confused by the 80s. And now, let's see what Reagan and Missy have in common. Oh my gosh, more than I can say. Just like her character, the girl has perfect comedic talent. She even comes up with her own jokes. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ben. Ben who? Been knocking for 20 minutes. <laughs> Reagan's oldest co-star had more to say about their similarities. You both can be a little sassy. Hmm. You both can tease. I love teasing Montana, like a playful tease. And how exactly does she do it? Let's see. In one interview, Reagan and Montana Jordan recalled this scene from season one. We're gonna hit it! Well, you're in trouble now. The actress had never worked with the green screen before. She had no idea that they were going to film in front of one, so she was pretty scared. I thought he was actually going to be driving. And I was like, oh, what? I'm a good driver. The look she's giving him at the end is exactly like Missy. Speaking of Montana, the funniest scene for him was when George Sr. had troubles with the chair. We had to retake that at least like 30 times, and I'm not kidding. This young man certainly enjoys his time on set. He especially likes it when they get to eat on camera. Probably my favorite part, um, being from Texas, is the dinner scenes for sure. And just like Reagan, Montana is pretty similar to his character. For example, he pulled a true Georgie move when the kids discussed returning to school after the quarantine. Reagan said that she missed it a lot, while Montana... I didn't miss it at all. And here's one more thing that he has in common with Georgie. I love that he doesn't clean his room, because that's like me in real life. Reagan spilled the true tea. His room, room is life. more messy than Georgie's. <laughs> but of course, Montana isn't exactly like his character. His on-screen dad can name at least one difference between them. I dare to say that you're a little smarter than Georgie. I hope so. Yeah, I hope Yeah, we hope so too. Who's your favorite adult character? Let me guess, it's me, Mom. Annie Potts is having a blast playing her. First of all, because of the kids. They're in my lap and all over me, kissing me, hugging me, telling me they love me all day long. And I get paid for that. They love her not only because she's nice and kind, but also because Potts entertains them with her Bo Peep voice from Toy Story. Have I done Bo Peep for you? You have. I think <laughs> you have before, a couple times. Come on, Woody. Classic. The actress has the sweetest nickname for her child co-stars. 
you'll never guess what it is. Call them the ferrets. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when we go on a new set or something, it's all very interesting for them. <laughs> Hilarious. The other adult actors also enjoy filming the show. Lance Barber, for example, likes making what they call quote-unquote George faces. And we've even named them. Do George face number two with a little hint of number 11. Those are my favorite to play. And his on-screen wife, Zoe Perry, is happy to pick up the role her mother played before her. I definitely never imagined I'd be playing my mother at a younger age. <laughs> oh, that's a funny turn, isn't it? <laughs> I assume you know that Zoe is the daughter of Lori Metcalf, who played Mrs. Cooper in The Big Bang? Anyway, let's move on to the mighty little man. When Ian started playing Sheldon, he had no idea about some of his habits, because he was too young to watch The Big Bang Theory back then. For example, it felt weird for him to knock like Dr. Cooper. And I knocked how I would knock, just sort of going. And they were like, no, you have to do it three times and then say their name. And I was very confused by that. Just like Reagan, Ian found it hard to figure out some of the 80s stuff. Ian didn't understand what a dial tone right. was. What? That he was dialing first. And then picking and up then the picking phone. And then picking up the phone. Well, he was born a few decades later. But it's still funny to see how confused he, Reagan, and Montana get when they see something from the 80s. Huh? Ah! Just look at that. Ooh, ooh, cassette tape! Cassette tape! Cassette tape! Cassette tape. Video. It's a cassette tape! It's a cassette tape! It's a Walkman! Oh, no. Don't you just love this girl? But back to Ian. The weirdest thing for him about the 80s is... Probably the fashion. Mostly because of Meemaw's shirts. Well, I put my arm around her and I'll be like, your shoulder feels weird. And then she's like, <laughs> all of it's padded. And there's something else, too. The size of those computers. <laughs> I mean, what was up with that? <laughs> That's bigger than my room at home. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to understand now when you can have a computer in the palm of your hand. But even harder for Ian was having to memorize all that scientific jargon. And here near Apogee, we gimbal the engine to exert a torque which executes a pitch over maneuver to flip the rocket by 180 degrees. <laughs> Needless to say, we use a PID controller to minimize the dispersions to the landing site. <laughs> I mean, I know he was speaking English, but what? Turns out Ian was just as confused by it too. I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> Ian said he just had to pretend to know what he was saying. And he did a great job. Here's one more thing that you might not know about the young actor. He has a nerdy hobby, but it's one Sheldon probably wouldn't approve of. Turns out Ian collects rocks. I do. I have amethyst, reaganite, calcite. I have lapis lazuli. That's I a lot of rocks. <laughs> I have so many more. Wow. But unlike us, Sheldon wouldn't be impressed because we know how much he hated geology. Geology isn't a real science! And there's more. Ian can't even remember how many laws Newton had. He has like three Two. laws, or 12 laws, or however many laws. I love those so much. Plus, he doesn't really like doing his homework. They're sitting on your math problems. You're math very, they're covering up your homework. Does that mean you don't have to do it? <laughs> Let's just say it does. Well, any other kid would get you, Ian. And for dessert, here's one more story about the youngest stars of the show. The Missy and Sheldon actors spend most of their time in the studio, so at one point, they were treating it like their playground. You know, it's a whole big stage with a, you know, there's so many hide and seek spots, we were going to play tag and stuff. But since they were kids, they weren't allowed to just run around without supervision. Being as smart as Sheldon and Missy, Ian and Reagan decided to find a solution. They wrote a letter to the then president of Warner Brothers. Is there any way you could designate like a place for us to play, or is there an area you could think of? Yet the guy turned out to be even more generous than they expected. They built us a park. The kids were thrilled. And they'd built a park for us. It had a little sign that said like Young Sheldon Park. Um, but it was really cool and awesome. And I just remember that that was such a kind, crazy thing. How sweet of them. I wonder if this park still exists. Share in the comments below if you'd like to visit it. And if you want to learn more about the Young Sheldon cast, check out our other videos. Bye.